Hey friends of Wildland Fire, Darren Claybo here, uh, State Fire Meteorologist for South Dakota. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about mixing height. Now mixing height is a variable that you can find in a lot of fire weather forecasts. Mixing height uh, is just the level to which your smoke column can reach. So if you have a, a smoke column that goes up 6,000 feet, the top of your mixing height might be 6,000 feet and then the smoke column kind of trails off. Well there's a lot of physical processes that go into making the mixing height. Uh, and I want to illustrate a few things about those processes because mixing height can be used as a proxy for estimating fire danger. Uh, there's a lot of these physical processes that go into the mixing height itself that can actually push wildfire across the landscape. So in order to start that conversation, we have to have a little conversation about the, the kind of the properties of air. So if air is warmer than its surroundings, that air will rise. And if air is cooler than its surroundings, then that air will sink, right? It's just properties of buoyancy. But as the air rises or as the air sinks, its temperature changes. And we know what that temperature change is. So if we're talking about dry air or air that has an RH of less than 100%, we also call that unsaturated air. If we take unsaturated air and we make that air rise, for whatever reason, force it to rise, that air will cool at the dry adiabatic lapse rate. That lapse rate is five and a half degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet. So as the air rises, it expands because there's less pressure as it goes up and it cools at five and a half degrees per thousand feet. Well, if we take air above the ground and we make it sink towards the ground, well, the, it, the air pressure increases so the, the air has to compress. And through that compression, you heat it and it heats at the dry adiabatic lapse rate as well. So it heats at five and a half degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet of sinking. And so a couple of concepts to remember as we go through this. Warm air is always going to want to rise, or air that's warmer than its surroundings is always going to want to rise, and that it cools at a dry adiabatic lapse rate as it rises and warms at a dry adiabatic lapse rate as it sinks. So let's go through some graphs to further illustrate this concept. So here we have a graph. On the bottom of the graph down here, we have temperature going from 65 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and then we have height above the ground over on the left hand side, 1,000 feet, 2,000 feet, 3,000 feet. And let's say we start with a parcel of air, a blob of air that's at 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And if we make that blob of air rise up 1,000 feet, we should be able to see that that temperature of that air cools because, of course, there's less pressure and it cools at the dry adiabatic lapse rate. And so once we get to uh, 1,000 feet above the surface, we should see that the temperature is 79.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and if we make that parcel rise further, another thousand feet, it's going to cool another five and a half degrees Fahrenheit. And so at the 2000 feet, it'll be 74 degrees Fahrenheit. Of course, if we make it rise another thousand feet all the way up to 3000 feet, it's going to be 68.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And we can see now that's 16.5 degrees colder than when it started at the surface because it rose to 3,000 feet. And it did so at the dry adiabatic lapse rate. And we can write that as a line, as I have here. And it's just the sloped line that slopes uh, upwards uh, at five and a half degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet. So let's take this a step further. If I have a parcel of air at 3,000 feet in elevation, that's 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and I make it sink to the surface, it's going to want to warm at five and a half degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet. And so it goes down to 2,000 feet, goes down to 1,000 feet, and it hits the surface. Well, it too warms 16 and a half degrees. It started at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and when it goes down 3,000 feet, it's now at 86.5 degrees Fahrenheit. 3,000 feet times 5.5 degrees Fahrenheit of heating per thousand feet gives you 16.5 degrees of heating. And again, you end up with your dry adiabatic lapse rate. And so both of those pathways that I just showed you really illustrate a dry adiabatic lapse rate. It's the slope of the line that matters here. And why is this important or how does this tie into what mixing height actually is? Okay, so let's say that I launch a weather balloon. And that weather balloon measures a temperature at the surface of 68 degrees. But as the weather balloon goes up with height, it measures a temperature that increases um, until, I don't know, 750 feet above the surface. The temperature at the surface was 68 degrees. The temperature here is roughly, you know, 76 or 77 degrees. At that point, the weather balloon measures a decrease in temperature. And it decreases at whatever rates these are at. It doesn't really matter. This is a pretty common scene in the morning. 
this is what we would call a nocturnal inversion. It's an inversion that formed uh, overnight because the ground cools overnight. There's no sunshine. And so let's say this is our vertical temperature profile when we wake up in the morning. Oh, 600 hours, we get to our morning briefing. Um, I launched a weather balloon, and this is the, this is the uh, profile, uh, the temperature profile that is seen. Well, of course, 0600, sun starts to rise up as well. So at this time, our temperature is 68 degrees. Really, the only thing or the biggest thing that's impacting the temperature change throughout this column of 3,000 feet of air is going to be the impacts at the surface. So when the sun hits the ground, uh, it heats the ground up. And as the ground warms up, the air above the ground warms. Um, and the air above that can't warm quite yet because it hasn't felt the effects of the surface warming, but it can feel those effects. And I'll go through this process. So 0600, our surface temperature, uh, 68 degrees, and then we have an inversion uh, up to about 750 feet above the ground, and then a temperature decreases with height. Well, let's say at 0730 hours, the sun's been up for an hour or so, and the surface temperature warmed from 68 to 73. Well, we can look at that surface temperature of 73 degrees and we can take a parcel and we can make that parcel rise at the dry adiabatic lapse rate. That parcel rises at the dry adiabatic lapse rate represented by this blue dashed line. And so the parcel temperature goes, uh, decreases at the dry adiabatic lapse rate until it intercepts kind of the, what we call the, the leftover or the residual layer of the atmosphere. So we have vertical mixing through this part of the atmosphere. And so we call that the mixing height. We can have rising parcels from the surface that go up to where um, the dry adiabatic lapse rate would intercept, if you will, the old um, temperature profile. And that's our new temperature profile. Put the old temperature profile in pink because we've warmed this entire layer. Um, and now our temperature profile looks like this. If we were to launch a weather balloon at 0730 hours, our weather balloon would measure um, a 73 degree surface temperature a temperature lapse rate that decreases at the dry adiabatic lapse rate, and then it follows the uh, previous temperature profile that really hadn't changed. This layer of air down here that's within the mixing height is called the planetary boundary layer. It's the layer of air that is next to the surface. It's the layer of air that's impacted by the surface and the surface characteristics, not only sunshine, but also frictional effects. So the top of the mixing height went from basically zero at sunrise to now we're at, I don't know, 300 feet, something like that, at 0730 hours. Well, let's say we warm things a bit more. Let's say at 0900 hours, our temperature went from 73 to 77 degrees. Our parcel of air at the surface can now rise dry adiabatically to this level, where it intercepted our, our kind of residual temperature that was still up here. That is our new mixing height. So now our mixing height went from 300 feet at 0730 to now maybe 600 feet at 0900. The sun heated the ground, the ground warmed the air. That air was available to rise through the process of convection, but as it rises, it cools at the dry adiabatic lapse rate. And at some point, its temperature met the temperature of the environmental air around it. So all of the sunshine, all of the solar heating um, that has, we've accrued from 0600 to 0900 has allowed um, heating of this kind of blob of air right over here. And that is now our mixing height. So our mixing height went from 0 at 0600 to maybe 300 feet at 0730 to now maybe 600 feet at 0900 hours. Well, let's say our temperature rises 3 degrees more. Now our surface temperature is 80 degrees. Our surface parcels are rising, and as they're rising, they're cooling at the dry adiabatic lapse rate, and now it intercepts our temperature profile right here. It's what we call the nose of the inversion, or the warmest part of our nocturnal inversion. And this is very important, because once you hit that point, any further temperature increase will result in a dramatic increase in the mixing height. So our mixing height, in over the course of four and a half hours, only went from zero to maybe 800 feet. And our temperature warmed from 68 degrees to now 80 degrees. But our mixing height didn't go up that much because we had to overcome this inversion. At this point, this is what we would consider our timing of our inversion break. At this point, any further warming is going to dramatically increase our mixing height. So let's say I warm it three more degrees. Now our surface temperature is 83 degrees. Our surface parcels were able to rise and cool dry adiabatically as they go up the column. And now they intercept our kind of temperature profile all the way up here. 
in just a couple of hours, our mixing height went from 800 feet, or not even a couple hours, uh, an hour and a half, our mixing height went from 800 feet to now maybe 2,100 feet. So you can imagine that if you're on a fire and you watch your smoke column just kind of um, barely get up, barely get up, but your surface temperature is increasing, increasing, then all of a sudden your smoke column increases several thousand feet over the course of 20 or 30 minutes, it's likely that you broke your nocturnal inversion and your surface temperature um, is sufficient enough where that you can get rising parcels to go well above um, that uh, previously existing inversion layer. And so now if I were to launch a weather balloon, my weather balloon would be have show a surface temperature of 83 degrees. My weather balloon would measure a dry adiabatic lapse rate um, all the way up to maybe 2,100 feet. And then uh, it would show kind of the pre-existing lapse rate that was there before. So let's say we warm further. Three, three more degrees. Now our surface temperature is 86 degrees and our mixing height now is maybe 2,600 feet. And this is kind of what happens every day, especially when we have good, strong solar radiational heating. Um, if you don't have cloud cover, you don't have a thick smoke deck, the strong sunshine is able to hit the ground. The ground warms up, it warms the air above that, and that warm air is able to rise. But again, rising air cools at the dry adiabatic lapse rate. And so you have to compare the lapse rate of your rising air to the lapse rate of your environment to see where your mixing height is. So this is a, um, an actual weather balloon from uh, Dodge City taken on um, the morning of 29th of March of 2022. And this is a 12Z sounding. So this is a sounding taken you know, roughly at, at seven o'clock uh, central time, six o'clock a.m. Uh, uh, mountain time, and the weather balloon measures this right line here represents temperature profile all the way up. This uh, the line on the left measures the dew point all the way up. And temperature uh, at the surface is right here. Dodge City is is a relatively elevated place. You know its surface uh, elevation is roughly three thousand feet, which corresponds to a surface pressure of roughly um, nine hundred and ten millibars. But if we have a surface temperature right here, as the balloon launched. The surface temperature was, let me get my cursor going here. Um, the surface temperature, and this is in Celsius, of course, but it's a roughly 12 degrees Celsius. The surface dew point was roughly 6 degrees Celsius. And you can see that as um, the balloon went up, the temperature dramatically increased. It increased to nearly uh, 24 degrees Celsius from 11 degrees Celsius. That's a that's a strong nocturnal inversion, very strong nocturnal inversion. And then you can see the temperature decreased dramatically um, above that layer. Well, the high temperature in Dodge City on the 29th of March was actually, let's see, about 29 degrees Celsius. And so if we put the forecast high temperature of 29 degrees Celsius on our graph, and then we draw the dry adiabatic lapse rate. By the way, these lines on this complicated graph paper represent the dry adiabatic lapse rates. So if we parallel one of those lines, we can take a surface parcel at the forecast high of 29 degrees Celsius, and we can make that surface parcel rise at a line that parallels the dry adiabatic lapse rate. It intercepts the environmental profile right about there. And so what I'm getting at is the morning temperature was here, 11 degrees Celsius. During the day, these parcels, or during the morning, these parcels continually warmed. But as they warmed, they were only able to rise um, to the level of the inversion at that location. And they were fighting against that inversion the whole day. But at some point, maybe when the temperature hit 25 or 26 degrees Celsius, those parcels were able to overcome those in that inversion as they were rising. And then by the time we got to the hottest time of the day, we were able to mix very, very deep into the atmosphere, basically this whole layer. And that's what the next slide is gonna show. Our parcel rose at the dry adiabatic lapse rate, um, and our mixing height ends up being 11,000 feet above the ground. So in the morning, our surface temperature was here. Smoke column really can't do anything because the, the air can't rise through this very, very strong inversion. But as the temperature of the surface warmed up, we were able to overcome that inversion. The inversion broke, if you will, and our air parcels were able to rise to a very high height. Now, that is exceptionally important. And I say it's exceptionally important for a couple of reasons. Because not only do we have rising air in this area, due to continuity, we also have to have sinking air in that same layer. So as the sun warms the ground, 
the ground warms the air and the air rises and cools at the dry adiabatic lapse rate. But that creates a void of the air near the surface. It basically creates a low pressure area. That low pressure area attracts air to it and creates voids next to it. Well, those voids of air have to be filled too because we're talking continuity. If you're taking out air out of one place, air from another place has to go in and replace it. Well, that air sinks from above. And remember that sinking air warms via adiabatic compression. Sinking air warms at that five and a half degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet. And that's exceptionally important because not only are we bringing down air up here and bringing it to the surface, that's a heating process. We're taking air that was heated at the surface and we're pushing it aloft. But as the air sinks, typically well above the surface layer, we have strong winds because we have less friction up here. Strong winds. So as the parcels sink, they're bringing strong wind to the surface. They're bringing momentum with them to the surface. And as those um, surface parcels rise, they're kind of bringing weaker winds aloft. Well, the other thing that's going on is the surface is the source for all of the moisture. There is dry air aloft. So as the parcels sink, they're bringing dry air with them. And as the parcels rise, they're stripping moisture away from the surface and they're bringing it to higher heights in the atmosphere. What does this result in? A day with a very strong mixing process is going to result in higher winds and drier air mixing down to the surface and compressionally heating on the way down. Meanwhile, you're taking radiatively heated air that has relatively high moisture and low winds and you're bringing that to higher areas of the atmosphere. In essence, a day that has a high mixing height tends to lower the surface dew points by bringing in drier air from aloft. It increases your surface temperature through compressional heating and it generally increases your surface wind gusts because you're transporting air that has higher momentum from aloft to the surface. Higher mixing heights tend to promote larger fire growth because of this process. So how does mixing height relate to atmospheric stability? Well, remember that within a well-mixed layer, the temperature decrease with height falls at the dry adiabatic lapse rate. This implies a neutrally stable atmosphere. We are not unstable, we are not stable, we are neutrally stable, which means that parcels neither want to accelerate upwards or sink downwards. So what does this mean for instability? Well, if we have a fire at the surface, fire is hot. Because fire is hot, the air above the fire is hot, and it's gonna be much, much hotter than the environmental air surrounding it. So that means that when we have a fire on the ground in a neutrally stable environment, the air above the fire is inherently unstable and it's going to want to rise and rise at a very fast rate, which is why you see a convective column above a fire accelerate vertically. So even though a well-mixed layer is neutrally stable, it's not inherently unstable. If you put a fire underneath a neutrally stable atmosphere, you are creating unstable conditions. As a fire meteorologist, I'm always looking at mixing height. It's one of the most important things that I see in the fire weather forecast um, itself because it, it's driving those physical processes that can push fire across the landscape. High mixing heights tend to lead to surface temperatures that are well above average, that lead to low surface moisture, low RHs, if you will, and gussiness and turbulence on your fire. So pay attention to your mixing height, track its trends. If you notice one day that the mixing height goes way up versus the other days, that might be a day that has more fire potential. So again, feel free to reach out to me, contact me. I'd love to initiate more conversations about the mixing height and why I think it is one of the more important variables on the fire weather forecast.